Chronic kidney disease, CKD, is a serious condition where the kidneys gradually lose their ability to function properly over time, which can cause other health complications like heart issues, high blood pressure, anemia, and kidney failure. CKD progresses through five stages and often develops without obvious symptoms until it becomes serious. It is estimated that more than one in seven adults in the U.S. may have CKD, yet nearly 90% of them don't even know they have it. Therefore, understanding the five stages of CKD is crucial for early detection and effective management. In today's video, let's learn about these five stages of CKD, what happens to the kidneys at each stage, how symptoms may appear, and practical tips on how to manage this condition. Without any further delay, let's begin with stage one. Stage one, CKD, is the earliest stage of kidney disease. At this stage, there is minor damage to the kidneys, but they are still working well with a normal or slightly increased glomerular filtration rate, GFR, of 90 milliliters per minute or higher. GFR is basically a test done to measure how well your kidneys filter blood, specifically how much blood passes through the tiny filters in your kidneys, called glomeruli, each minute. A higher, GFR, generally means better kidney function. Because the kidneys are so adaptable, they can still perform their critical functions, even with minor damage. This is why most people with stage one, CKD, do not realize they have a problem and symptoms are usually very mild or not noticeable at all. Many people with stage one, CKD, are diagnosed during routine blood or urine tests, often done for other reasons like annual checkups or monitoring conditions such as diabetes or high blood pressure. Since these conditions are major risk factors for CKD, regular testing is essential for those who have them. Moreover, as mentioned earlier, there are not any specific symptoms in stage one, but there can be signs of kidney damage, such as higher than normal levels of creatinine or urea in your blood, blood or protein in your urine, or abnormalities found in imaging tests like MRIs, CT scans, ultrasounds, or contrast x-rays. A family history of polycystic kidney disease, PKD, can also increase your risk of developing CKD. Even though stage one, CKD, may seem harmless, it is important to take it seriously and get medical help. Early detection helps for effective treatment of the underlying causes and can help stop the progression of the disease. At this stage, managing CKD involves protecting your kidney function and preventing further damage. This includes controlling your blood sugar levels if you have diabetes, managing blood pressure, following a healthy diet, quitting smoking, and staying physically active. Adopting healthier lifestyle habits is also crucial. This means eating fewer processed and high sodium foods and more whole grains, fruits, and vegetables. Staying active, managing blood sugar and blood pressure, and maintaining a healthy weight are also important to preserving kidney function. While there is no cure for kidney disease, lifestyle changes, and medical care can often slow or even stop the progression of stage one, CKD. Your doctor may also refer you to a nephrologist, a kidney specialist who can provide more personalized care and closely monitor your condition. Therefore, by following medical advice and making lifestyle changes, you can maintain your kidney function and reduce the risk of advancing to more severe stages of CKD. Stage two. In stage two, CKD, the kidneys are slightly damaged and the GFR drops slightly, usually by about 60 to 89 milliliters per minute. At this point, kidney damage is still quite minor and the body continues to adjust, allowing for normal kidney function. Like stage one, many patients with stage two CKD may not have any visible symptoms and the condition is frequently detected during routine tests for other health conditions such as diabetes or high blood pressure. Certain people may start to feel vague signs, symptoms of a condition that are not specific or clearly defined, though, which are easily mistaken for other health problems. The person may have high blood pressure, swollen hands and feet, frequent urinary tract infections, UTIs, and blood in the urine. These symptoms are usually not very noticeable, so it is important to get regular checkups and tracking, especially for people who know they are at a higher risk for kidney disease because of diabetes, high blood pressure, or a family history of the disease. 
Effective management of stage 2 CKD involves maintaining a healthy lifestyle and regular consultations with your healthcare provider. Regular testing for protein in the urine and serum creatinine levels is crucial for monitoring disease progression. Dietary changes play a significant role at this stage. It is advisable to follow a diet rich in whole grains, fresh fruits, and vegetables, while minimizing processed and refined foods high in sugar and sodium, as these can worsen kidney damage. Limiting cholesterol and unhealthy fats is also beneficial. Moreover, maintaining a healthy weight, engaging in regular physical activity, and controlling blood pressure and blood sugar levels are essential for managing the condition. Stage 3 Stage 3 CKD indicates moderate kidney damage and is a crucial point in the progression of kidney disease. This stage is divided into two substages. Stage 3A, with a GFR of 45 to 59 milliliters per minute, and Stage 3B, with a GFR of 30 to 44 milliliters per minute. At this stage, your kidneys are no longer filtering waste, toxins, and fluids as effectively, resulting in their accumulation in the body, which causes uremia. In Stage 3 CKD, symptoms become more apparent. Regular blood tests, such as the estimated glomerular filtration rate, eGFR, will likely show a decline in kidney function. Symptoms you might experience include back pain, fatigue, loss of appetite, persistent itching, sleep disturbances, swelling, edema, changes in urination patterns, and general weakness. As kidney function deteriorates, the risk of complications increases. Chronic conditions such as anemia, bone disease, and high blood pressure can further impact your overall health. Anemia occurs because the kidneys no longer produce enough erythropoietin, a hormone necessary for red blood cell production, causing increased fatigue and weakness. Imbalances in calcium and phosphorus levels can cause bone disease, increasing the risk of fractures and other skeletal problems. At this stage, it's essential to seek specialized care from a nephrologist. A nephrologist will conduct thorough testing and determine the appropriate treatment plan. The primary goal at stage 3 is to preserve kidney function and prevent further decline. Managing your diet becomes even more critical in stage 3 CKD. A kidney dietitian can help create a personalized meal plan specified to your needs. This plan might involve limiting potassium, phosphorus, and calcium intake, and focusing on high-quality proteins. Reducing salt intake is also important, especially if you have high blood pressure or experience fluid retention. For those with stage 3 CKD, especially if you have diabetes or high blood pressure, taking prescribed medications is crucial for maintaining health. Your doctor may recommend ACE inhibitors, or ARBs, to help slow the progression of kidney disease. Along with diet and medication, incorporating regular exercise and quitting smoking are vital for overall kidney health and well-being. Although CKD cannot be cured, appropriate medical care, lifestyle changes, and ongoing monitoring can significantly slow the progression of stage 3 CKD. Stage 4 Stage 4, CKD represents an advanced stage of kidney disease, characterized by a significant decline in kidney function with a glomerular filtration rate, GFR, between 15 and 30 milliliters per minute. At this stage, the kidneys are severely damaged, and patients are likely to require dialysis or a kidney transplant in the near future. Waste products build up in the blood, resulting in uremia and increasing the risk of complications such as high blood pressure, anemia, bone disease, heart disease, and other cardiovascular problems. Symptoms of stage 4, CKD, are typically more pronounced and severe. These may include extreme fatigue, fluid retention, causing swelling in the extremities, shortness of breath, and changes in urine output. Patients may also experience kidney pain, muscle cramps, restless legs, nausea, vomiting, and a metallic taste in the mouth. Additionally, there may be bad breath, loss of appetite, difficulty concentrating, and nerve issues such as numbness in the fingers or toes. Given the severity of stage 4 CKD, it is crucial to be under the care of a nephrologist. This specialist will monitor critical health indicators such as creatinine, hemoglobin, calcium, and phosphorus levels through routine blood tests. They will also manage high blood pressure and diabetes and prepare for potential dialysis or kidney transplantation. 
Treatment options for stage 4 CKD include hemodialysis, peritoneal dialysis, PD, or a kidney transplant. Hemodialysis can be performed in a dialysis facility or at home with the assistance of a care partner. Peritoneal dialysis can be carried out at home or even at work, often without needing a caregiver. Many patients prefer a kidney transplant as it allows them to avoid the dietary restrictions associated with dialysis. However, finding a suitable donor and undergoing the transplant process can be challenging, making it essential to work closely with the healthcare team. Managing stage 4 CKD also involves careful dietary management. A renal dietitian will help create a meal plan that limits protein intake to reduce waste products, controls phosphorus, and potassium levels if they are high, and restricts salt and calcium as needed. For those with diabetes or high cholesterol, it is important to reduce carbohydrates and saturated fats, respectively. Fluid intake also needs to be adjusted based on the patient's condition. Medication is an important aspect of managing stage 4 CKD. Controlling blood pressure and blood sugar levels is critical, as following the prescribed medication regimen can delay the need for dialysis or transplantation and help preserve kidney function. In addition to medical treatments and dietary adjustments, maintaining an active lifestyle and avoiding smoking are vital for overall health. Although stage 4 CKD is severe, effective medical therapy, lifestyle changes, and ongoing monitoring can manage symptoms and slow disease progression. Adhering to the treatment plan and making necessary adjustments can help maintain a good quality of life and potentially defer more invasive treatments. Stage 5. Stage 5 CKD, commonly known as end-stage renal disease, ESRD, is the last and most severe stage of chronic kidney disease. The GFR is below 15 milliliters per minute and the kidneys have practically stopped working. The body's ability to remove waste and toxins becomes impaired, resulting in potentially fatal complications. Without intervention, these chemicals can accumulate in the blood and be lethal. Symptoms in stage 5 CKD are severe and have a major influence on the patient's quality of life. Extreme tiredness, trouble focusing, and a general feeling of being sick are usual signs. As toxins build up in the blood, Patients may feel sick, vomit, lose their appetite, and lose weight. Patients may have shortness of breath and chest pain from fluid buildup in the lungs and around the heart. Swelling in the hands, feet, and face is common because of hydrostatic pressure. An extremely low level of kidney function puts a lot of stress on the heart and other important systems, which raises the risk of heart disease, stroke, and other problems. In this situation, Medical help is needed right away to keep the person alive. At this stage, the person needs either dialysis or a kidney transplant to stay alive. The two main types of dialysis treatment are hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis, PD. PD uses the lining of the belly, peritoneum, as a natural filter, while hemodialysis uses a machine to remove waste and extra fluids from the blood. For many people, a kidney transplant is the best long-term option but it can be hard to find a good donor and go through the transplant process. In stage 5 CKD, managing diet is hard and needs the help of a renal dietitian. People's dialysis schedules and blood test results must be carefully taken into account when planning their food. Living with stage 5 CKD can be hard, but with the right care and support, many people can live full lives. Regular nephrologist visits, kidney function monitoring, and a solid support network are necessary for disease management and quality of life. Now, let's discuss the causes of chronic kidney disease, CKD. Chronic kidney disease, CKD, can arise from many health conditions and lifestyle factors that impact kidney health over time. So, let's discuss some of them. Number one, diabetes. Diabetes is one of the leading causes of CKD. High blood sugar levels from diabetes can damage the blood vessels in the kidneys, degrading their ability to filter waste effectively. Managing your blood sugar levels through diet, medication, and regular checkups is essential to prevent kidney damage. Number two, high blood pressure. High blood pressure can strain and damage the blood vessels in the kidneys, resulting in CKD. Regularly, monitor your blood pressure and follow your doctor's recommendations to keep it within a healthy range. Number three, high cholesterol. 
Elevated cholesterol levels can contribute to kidney damage by causing blockages in the blood vessels that supply the kidneys. Maintaining a healthy diet and taking medications as prescribed can help manage cholesterol levels. Number four, kidney infections. Recurrent kidney infections can damage kidney tissue and impair kidney function. If you experience symptoms of a kidney infection, such as pain or fever, seek medical treatment promptly to prevent long-term damage. Number five, smoking. Smoking can worsen kidney function by increasing blood pressure and causing damage to blood vessels. Quitting smoking is crucial for maintaining kidney health and overall well-being. Number six, long-term use of certain medications. Prolonged use of medications such as lithium or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, can harm the kidneys. If you are on these medications, discuss with your doctor about alternative treatments and regular kidney function monitoring. Number seven, severe dehydration, chronic dehydration, which results in decreased blood flow to the kidneys, can cause kidney damage. It's important to stay well hydrated and address any conditions that lead to severe dehydration. By understanding these risk factors and taking proactive steps to manage them, you can significantly reduce your risk of developing CKD.